big with two G's. I'm gonna repeat that. That's big with two G's. We back with another episode of the Big Umbrella Podcast. I'm going to repeat that. That's the Big Umbrella Podcast with two Gs. I'm your host, Poncho. If you know, you know. Now, we got Soul Food City 313 in the building. I'm going to introduce. We got Vic and we got Kaylin. I mean, like I said earlier, I don't know if y'all went by something else. That's all up to you guys. But like I said, we got them here. We haven't tried the food yet, but it looked good as hell. And that's obviously why they're here. They're going to touch on what they're doing out here in San Diego. That's something major. Like I was telling them earlier, I love speaking with people that's actually doing something out here in San Diego. And this is somebody we have here. So I'm going to let them take over and introduce themselves. What up, though? My name Big Vic. I'm Kaylin. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, pause. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you don't need to pause. Okay, no, okay, you I'm good. Sorry. There's no pause. He's Kaylin and he's about to get into okay, what he's I'm got sorry, going. Yeah, I don't know how this works. Okay. No, you got it all going. You working okay, right cool, now. Cool. We good. All right. Shoot. So look, we the owners of Soul Food City. Me and my auntie, my auntie recipes. We came together, came up with an idea to open up a soul food restaurant out here in San Diego. Her recipes is amazing. You know, she used to cook it back in high school when I was in high school. She used to cook it, and um, I thought about it out here. Like, we, we ain't really had no good soul food out here. Like, every time I was going to the crib in Detroit, like, um, shit, I'm like, damn. Hit my parents up, like, all right, we need this. I need right. that. Chicken, macaroni, collard greens. Make sure I, I got that. I ain't even asking what we doing. I'm extra short. I got the food there yeah. first. So, yeah, so I thought about that. I'm like, Auntie, shit, she used to make the plates, so why not bring that out here? Exactly. So I hit her up, and then, you know, came up with Soul Food City. She had her menu ready. We was on the road. Shit, had everything going. And then I had Cuz come out here and help me out. You know, we really got the ball rolling. See, and that's dope. Y'all family and y'all, like, that's tighter than anything. Like, y'all, y'all's blood working together type shit. So I also, like, that's, that's respect. I like that a lot. I appreciate it. And then for you... You go ahead and, because you also, you chef, and you also got your own thing going as well. Yeah, so, you know, we're from Detroit, <clears throat> Detroit, Michigan. So, um, I have a, another business. Uh, we call it Kimberly Pieces. Um, so, we just like a vent space, but we do glass painting there. So, we're trying to basically bring it to California. Mm -hmm. And, like, we just did a recent event. It was pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, I just wanted to grow. So, it's, it's pretty cool. And why'd you go with Kimberly? So my mother's name was um, Kim. She mm -hmm. passed away. Mm -hmm. So we named the building after her. Okay. So, yeah. so you just want to keep that going? We, uh, yeah, For absolutely. Sure. And how long have y'all been out here in San Diego? So, yeah, so I've been out here three years. Uh, I was out here Damn, after three I got years, out the military. You got a business started like that quick. It's people who've been out here their whole life and like ain't even started nothing like that. So like that's already, that's major. Look, I, I just try to get things going. Like mm -hmm. I, I come up with the plan. And, you know, you stick with it. You set your goals and you do it one step at a time. One mm -hmm. step at a time, man. I mean, you, you do whatever you want, really. You can do whatever. The mm -hmm. military really set me up. So I did six years in the military, mm -hmm. got out here. And then I was working as a contractor doing the same thing. But it's it's only so high you can go. So I'm like, you know, it got to be something else. Like, the money was good. But, you know, I wasn't moving up. I wasn't going to go, go anywhere. Yeah. We so, met a lot of people who, like, actually was, was in the military prior to doing this and, like, kind of had that same feeling about it. Yeah. What um what branch of the military were you in? I was in the Navy. I was a uh, airframe structural mechanic, worked on helicopters. Damn. It was cool. It was so cool. then from you working on helicopters, did you end up doing some more, like, mechanical stuff with that? Or you Well, no, no, I stick different? with the same thing. Like, I was working on the Navy aircraft, mm -hmm. but I was a civilian mm -hmm. instead of being in, in the military. So, cool, better money. A little less bullshit, mm -hmm. but, you know, still the same, same. And what made you get out of the military? You know, it's it's not for everybody, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it got me to where I am now. Like, I, you know, I really appreciate the Navy. You know, I'm thankful. Glad I chose that. And, um, you know, it got me to what I needed to do. And now I'm on to another path. That's stepping stones. That's it. You mm -hmm. know, stepping up. What part of Detroit did you grow up in? So east side, I'm from Seven Mile, you know, born and raised, same house all my life. So 28 years of life. See, so I don't know too much about like that. So so like I was telling her earlier when like she said 313, I was like, the first thing I thought of was 8 Mile. What is something, see, and he was like, 
That's yeah. that is. See, so it's like, time. so that's every why, <laughs> right? That, that's what you said earlier. She's like, they say every that every time. time. So when when somebody does, like, so when they even see the name for your restaurant and say three one three, what is like more so you would want them to think of? That's for that's open for anybody. Oh, I mean, we represent three one three. Like we sell Fago products. We sell Better Made products. Like we rep in the D. Like we like Detroit coming up. Like it's a lot of popping artists out there. You know mm. what I'm saying? 42 Doug from Detroit. Like, it's Dage Loaf. Like, we we, we repping. Mm-hmm. For sure. What made y'all come out to San Diego? So, I was already out here. Once I got out, you know, I was working out here. Then after I quit that job and back in August and then opened this up in October last year, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, all right, this is the spot. You know, it's nice out here. Right. It's coming from Detroit. Like, you don't really see too much. You know, it's... It's it's nice out there, but it ain't really too much to mm. do. You know, out here you got everything. I can still go up north, get the snow. You know, exactly. out here I got the sun. Shit, I'm good. Right. Like, get the best best of both worlds. Yeah. So, you know, it's a nice place. And then my kids out here, you know, they they really like it out here. Mm. So you know, might as well stay out here and then bring Soul Food City out here. You exactly. know, another place somebody can call home. Like being in the military. You don't get that good food, that good, that grandma food. Because they got to cook for so many people. So many, they can't so really invest can't. all these spices and, and sauces. In. They ain't got nothing out here like right. what we got. What mm-hmm. we bring into the table, they don't have it out here. Like right. That. That's a, you know, fact. That's what's <laughs> up. And, and like we said, like I, when I even seen it, like it almost like it, you barely open up October, but so many people already heard about it so quick. I called my cousin mm-hmm. and let him know like this I was doing. She's like, oh, God damn, I just heard about this. I'm like. That's just blowing up like quick. I, I was. What was life like for you in Detroit? Because, like I said, I don't know too much about yeah. Detroit, so I could get a perspective of somebody who's actually ahead, from. Yeah. That's for whoever. <clears throat> well, yeah. for sure. Um, well, for you. <laughs> for me. Yeah. Like once I came out here, basically you get to see a whole another setting, and it's just like. Once you go back to Detroit, you kind of don't want to go back. Like, mm-hmm. it's just beautiful out here. So, for me, like, Detroit growing up wasn't like a, you know, it's just something I'm used to. Mm-hmm. So, this is probably my first time or probably second time living out of state. You know what I'm saying? But, actually, I want to move here. So, like, I just I always want to go back home, though. Like, I'm never just going to cut ties with Detroit. Mm-hmm. Like, I always want to go home, take care of my city. And then, like, you know, we go we go to Detroit. We act it out. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Sunday fun day, we do like, you know, we it's, it's, we do this. Like, it's just fun. Like, that's mm-hmm. always going to be our home, so. So when you say Detroit was just something you're used to, what what what, what did you mean, like, that you was used to? Because um, like they got, like, <clears throat> we got, like, a bad rep. Like, I was um, talking to somebody. It was like, yeah, you know, I just heard Detroit is just, like, dangerous. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Chicago, Detroit is, like, dangerous, you know, city. So, I mean, it's dangerous, but. Mm-hmm. Was it dangerous for you? No. Not really, but mm-hmm. I mean, everybody experienced something in Detroit. I'm not going to say, like, I ain't experienced no bad experiences, but it's a lot of people who then got murdered or, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. that lost some family members to gun violence, like, like a lot of that. So, I was watching a podcast today, and it was like, name a safe, poor city. That's unheard of. So it's like, when people base, like, oh, Detroit is bad or Chicago is bad, it's not even that place. It's, you got to base it off of what that environment really is and what they are taking to survive in there. So it's like when you base certain places and just put, paint that picture that this is just bad because of this and that's all you paint. You also got to what what's actually happening in them cities that you, this, that all this is really happening. Yeah. So when people like just paint that and just like and they usually mostly put it for like black folks and stuff like that that it's just bad and, and almost it's like black folks is just almost meant to be scared of at some point. I mean, obviously the athletes are love and all this other stuff, but outside of them being that, if they were just walking down the street, that may not be the same situation. So it's like, they also, you got to look at what the environment is like before you just say something is just so ghetto or some whatever, whatever you want to call it. So I always feel like when people, when people like, and you're from Detroit, so when they base it and just say it's horrible out there, you got to really base it off what people are doing to survive out there in that section that you're talking about. Yeah, for sure. What was it like growing yeah. up for you in Detroit? You know, so I grew up with a younger brother, five years apart. Mm-hmm. So my parents together married, um, shit, what, 27 years now? Married. Um, it, was, it wasn't too bad. Like, you know, 
my parents, they really protected us. So mm -hmm. they kept us in the backyard. We wasn't really outside running the streets young, mm -hmm. like our neighbors was, but we was in the backyard. Right. I mean, they kind of protected us, but it kept us, you know, kind of like closed minded on certain things that make you kind of want more to see like what's yeah, over like what's fence. yeah, like what's going on, you know, just make you want to wonder more. Mm -hmm. But you know, in the long run, I feel like it, it it still kept me on a good path. You know, kept me out of certain ways, certain certain dangers. You know, mm -hmm. my other friends, you know, encountered and stuff. So, you know. I kept it moving, but the military is really what, you know, pulled me out. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, I can't, I can't do it here. Like, it's it's not too, it's not like that, but, you know, my family there, I really wanted to stay for them, but I had to, you know, set myself up, get things going, you know. So before even the military, what was your life like? Are you close with, with your mom and your dad? Yeah, mm -hmm. very close. Like, we <clears throat> talk about anything, like, they had crack jokes on each other, like, mm -hmm. they, they open, like we open, like talked about everything. With them being married for 27, you said 27 years, right? 27, yeah. Does that inspire you to have something like that? Yeah, it's like everybody, you know, experience things different. So like- Cause nowadays a lot of people, they not really too, I mean, everybody, it's just two different spectrum. Like mm -hmm. everybody's, you could say that there's a half that's really not too concerned about being married. And yeah. then there's a half who really are quick to want to want to get married so mm -hmm. i mean for you like i said like your parents been married for 27 years that's something you've seen forever yeah. did that inspire yeah. you to now and be like you know i want to kind of do that same path definitely definitely because i learned a lot from them like a lot of stuff my father do is a lot of stuff i do here now with my family and kids and stuff now so you know it, it's ingrained in me like it's really what you know made me happy shit I'm, mm -hmm. i love to be a father the stuff I got to do every day, you know, it don't, it's not a burden on me. I mm. enjoy it, like, you know, and it means a lot. So, like, it put a smile on my face every right. day, every day. Knowing that I got to get up, even though I just went to sleep two two o'clock in the morning, yeah. getting off of work, shit. That's today, <laughs> shit. You got off work, I'm now you're doing love, this. Getting her hair ready, you know, drop her off to school, making sure they good, and then I'm going on to my day, shit. You take pride in being a father. Indeed, indeed. And definitely. Mm -hmm. And for you, <clears throat> do you have any kids or what's your siblings like? Do you so, have siblings? Yes, I have a sister. Mm -hmm. um, she's a, a boss. Mm -hmm. um, she's older than me or younger than you? She's older than me. Okay. Yeah, that's who also motivates me to, um, you know, basically move with intent. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, she's like a realtor. She's she owns property. She she's she just got her she just got her hands in everything. So yeah. she lead by example for sure. And um, no, I don't have any kids. Mm -hmm. No, I'm 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 deep in my bag right now. Yeah. So I'm I actually want to like change the community. I want to change the stigma about black women who got kids young and they mm -hmm. can't do. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I I want I want I want to make a difference. So and that's the and. That was without me even knowing, because like he even reached out, was like, "Oh, I'm gonna bring my my cousin on here." I was like, "Oh, that's no problem." That for me, I was like, already like obviously he want to bring somebody on here that's gonna represent like in the right way. So I'm even glad that he even brought you on here, because like you said, you want to show a different side of black pe black people, period, and women also. Because sure. I mean, you <laughs> you know how to do women, period. So I mean, that's also big. So I'm glad that you even came on here. Thank you. For you, what was it like with you growing up with your family? Um, I know your sister, like you said, she's a boss and that's what you looked up to. But as far as like your mom and your dad, did you grow up with them as well? Yeah. Um, my mom, I grew up with my mom. She's, you know, I, I tell you like this, you don't appreciate what you got until it's gone. So mm -hmm. my mom died at 55. Mm -hmm. So we wasn't the best, but I didn't appreciate it until she passed. Mm -hmm. So I I just kind of like, I didn't have a bad childhood. My family, we loved like my aunt, my sister, my cousins. My my immediate family, like the my the my hearts, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So we be laughing like these. We going out of town. We about to go to Vegas. We about to go, we just be rolling like this. My family's my backbone and my motivation. So I, I got a, a tight circle. It might not be the biggest circle, but I got a tight. Circle. Oh, you don't never need the biggest circle, and that's that's always like I I honestly grew up to realize that the older I got. The smaller and the smaller the circle got, but you always realize that small circle is the one that you'll never have to worry about. Like, damn, I wonder they're gonna be doing on some weird shit when I'm sick, right. bro. They're gonna like it's it's never that. I ain't never thought even that with the circle who I got, cause like you definitely don't need I honestly 
And I'm not going to do say whatever nobody's against. Like, I myself just would be against having the biggest circle because more people, especially the ones you don't know, inviting new ones to your circle might bring just more problems. So definitely good to have a small circle. So, yeah. and family. And so y'all been doing it for a long time. Like I said, y'all going to Vegas together. Mm-hmm. Did y'all grow up in the same part of Detroit? <clears throat> no. No. Where'd you grow up? So we we from Highland Park though. We got a our grandparents own a house um, on Highland Park, uh, Elmhurst. 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 So, but I like um, live like downtown. I, I predominantly went to school in like Dearborn though. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've lived in Atlanta. Like I moved around. So. So you move start moving around young. Yeah. What yeah. caused you to move around so much? <clears throat> I guess because um, I used to live with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So when she moved, I moved too. Mm -hmm. So she used to stay in Dearborn. I stayed there for pretty much a long time. And then I moved and went to Atlanta and went there for maybe like a year. And then we eventually just moved there. And um, I graduated from Oak Park High School, though. (laughs) So you touched on your mom. Where was your dad in that situation? Uh, My father passed when I was three. Okay, so you didn't even really get to... Mm-mm. Okay, see, I still haven't even met my dad, and I'm 31. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, but no, no, it's uh, me and my mom, we was like that. So right. that was never even a situation where I was thinking, like, God damn, like, where's my pops? So it was like, my mom was always my solid one. Like, mm-hmm. like y'all just see, she called me early right now and was like, let's go to the casino. So, I yeah. mean, it's like, it's like, nah, man, I can't do that right now. But, like, my mom, like, she A1, like you said, like, you got a small circle, especially when you got family. So, like, that's definitely something... Like, I love. What's been life like? Because like you said, like, you love San Diego. It's beautiful. What's been life like with San Diego and you, for you? Um, So, since I've been here, I've been really pushing my business Mm -hmm. um, these last six months. Um, And that's the glass painting. That's the glass painting. For sure. Um, This is a perfect place for it to thrive, Mm -hmm. um, basically, because it has good weather all year. And it's just open to all ages. And, you know, it's just basically very flexible with anybody, kids, adults, older people, married, single couples. Um, it's just something new that California, nobody really seen because it's a new business, but it's, it's grown very rapidly since mm-hmm. I've been down here. And um, I actually got booked for uh, a company from a company um, for my, for my business. So I'm yeah. pretty excited. So, what yeah. even got you into glass painting? Like I asked you earlier, do you like to draw? So what even got you into wanting it's, to do glass not- painting? <clears throat> It's not that I like to draw. So, like I said, we have a business in Michigan. Mm-hmm. So we spent um, almost three years. Um, I've been unemployed for almost three years. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my first time working, but we working in my. I'm working in my family kitchen. Right. So um, that's a blessing too, just being able to say I've been self-employed mm-hmm. and um, be an entrepreneur. But um, when I was there for three years, I discovered I was trying to do a paint with a twist, and it didn't go right. And I ended up having this idea to just put it on glass, and it really just popped. Mm-hmm. And then um, I forgot about it. I didn't even do it. <laughs> and then about about two, or about a year later, maybe two or a year later, because I discovered it early on, um, I started doing it again. Mm-hmm. And then I just really started putting a lot of work into it. And then it's just really, I really see how it affects people. As far as like when I can throw a glass paint event, it'd be couples painting, and they don't even talk to each other. And like because you said, it's, it's so therapeutic. Deep. It's therapeutic. And then not only, like, I put a lot of uh, details into it, like the, the last event, um, like I made fortunes, uh, wishful and inspiring quotes for the new year, right? Mm-hmm. We just sent it to a new year. Yeah. The name of the event was Quasi C'est La Vie, which is in French. That's like, that's life, right? And check you out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, I put these little inspirational quotes and I put on top of the card with love. And so people opened it. You know, like I prayed over these letters. I wrote them out by hand. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I put a lot of love into it. And when people open these envelopes, it mean more to people than I thought it would. You know what I'm saying? Right. So from now on, I'm doing that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm. You advanced. see how much it touched people. I see how much it touched people. And so mm-hmm. like I'm really offering, um, it's not about the glass. I'm really just offering a, an experience. Mm-hmm. It's an experience. Exactly. It's not about the glass. The glass is something, it's a keepsake from this this whole ordeal that you're coming to. That you're going to remember. That so you're going to remember. this glass, you remember the experience you had from it. Yes. And it's very, I mean, I hate to say it, but. Don't hate to say it. It's Don't better, hate to say it. It's better than paying with a twist, but I'm, I'm, that's going to be my biggest competition. Mm-hmm. So I got to watch out. Hey, Luis, you know. 
<laughs> At least you know. That's why I'm. It's it's really it's really nice. So it's just really it's experience, and I want to take it to a whole nother level. And mm. I'm so creative. <laughs> so that's really what I just been doing these last six months. I've been here, I've been working in the kitchen. So I just been working. Definitely working. For you in the military, what was that like? Because I know, like you being, you was close knit with your family. What was that like being away from your family, and or, or kind of what what even made you go away to the military? That made you like feel like okay, I got to get out of here, and I don't know where they sent you, but I'm sure it wasn't close. Yeah, <clears throat> so I was working uh, Subway full time and then KFC full time, not getting too much sleep, and you know it was cool. Money wasn't as good as uh, much time as I was putting in, so right. I'm like, shoot, I might as well go to the military, travel. Was there other people that you already knew went to the military? So my pops had a friend that always told him, like, yeah, make sure you go in, make sure you go into medical, make sure you get documented and shit. Like, you know, so I took that, like, all right, yeah, the military, nice. Like, I can go travel, the Navy, cool. And then I joined 2013, and then my first spot was Japan, four mm -hmm. years, Japan. So, you know, it was a different experience. Wow. No friends. To say the least. Yeah. Like, it was over. Like, different time zone and everything. Like, yeah. I got a call early in the morning or something to catch them at nighttime. Like, it's just over. Like, communication wasn't as good with, like, close friends. So, you know, circle really got small at the end. Yeah. But it wasn't really no hurt feelings. I know, like, everybody had got a life. You know, stuff going on. Like, they went to college. They did their thing. Right. You know, they did whatever. Got their job, you know. So, I understand. But, you know. I had to keep it moving, you know. I made some friends, you know, through the military. Through the military, mm -hmm. yeah. Like you know, being around, working with each other every day, you gonna be cool. You gonna of find course. some cool people. Like I met people from everywhere, and you was with tons of people. Tons of people, bro. You know, I'm, and I'm, I'm glad I experienced it. It was a very good experience, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy my time in the Navy for sure. I got my kids from you know me making that decision to join the Navy. So mm -hmm. grateful, grateful. What was the food like for you in Japan? In Japan, like it's it's amazing. Like it's a whole different lifestyle over there in Japan. Yeah, like, I'm I'm honestly I'm curious. <laughs> I'm I've never been, so I'm curious to what that's even like. I was worried at first, but you know everybody was telling me like, yeah, it's nice. Woo, woo, woo. Make sure you go to Rapungi, like Rapungi's a party city over there. Like mm -hmm. they go from eight p.m. to you know nine a.m. Like they going all night. You come, you go in, it's dark like this. You come out, it's sun, you like. And this is inside of a club? You're looking or, at the clock. Yeah, what time is it? It's time to go get on that train. Because the train stopped running after 12, 12 p.m. It's I mean, 12 a.m., it's over. They stopped running. And the train is taking you they back. Come, yeah, back to your cool school. Right. Like, that's where the, the Navy base be at. Yeah. So it's over after 12, and they start running at 5 a.m. So you got five hours to, to waste. Yeah. Until you getting back to the crib, so... And then out there, you ain't really supposed to be out. Why? Like, like it's against the, it's a, the rules? It's a curfew. They got a curfew over there. It's a curfew. So what happened if they catch you out? So it's like, they going to take you to jail if they catch you out after? Wait, no, you ain't going to get taken to jail, but they go, you going to get in trouble with the Navy. Oh, okay. And you going to get been bammed up with that shit. Yeah. That's all the other story. <laughs> he said been bammed up. <laughs> look, that 45, look, so they take 45 days. But your check, half of your check. Oh, wow. Days, and then you on... Restriction. So you stuck on the ship for 45 days. So you can't even go nowhere now. It's over. It's over. And you still got to work. Has it happened to you? <laughs> it, it happened to me. Oh, man. So, 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 so somebody it caught happened, you out it dude, at a time. But it wasn't, it wasn't that. It was yeah. on some, um, some other stuff. Other yeah. This shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was some other stuff. And they caught you up whatever that was. Yep. That's what it was. Yeah, been banned up. Yeah, that's what it was. That's but it wasn't a 45, 45. Like, they hit me with like a 15. It was just restriction. They didn't even take no bread. So. Okay, so it wasn't that I bad. just had 15 days stuck on the ship. Too. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't bad. That's yeah. It's cool. <laughs> And you said the food out there was good. The food, yeah, the food is nice. What was your favorite, like, stuff to eat out there? So, it's, uh, so they got one out here. It's a uh, pepper lunch. Is it pepper, pepper lunch? Something like that. It's out in L.A. or something like that. Mm. But it's called that. You know what that's called? Uh, it's something with the pepper lunch. It's uh, the pepper. right? Rice, yeah. So what's that good. about? Pepper lunch. It's so it's like, so I mean, I get we don't know if that's what it's rice. called for 100%, but, <laughs> but it's something like that. Something like that. I ain't been out of Japan. In yeah. Japan. I got to get back out Exactly. Sure. <laughs> it's something like that, though. But that, and then it was like a little Chinese. So they had like a little strip 
with all the food and then all the clubs. Mm -hmm. We used to be out there all night. Food, everything. Then they had a little taco stand. That should be busting. They were selling like what kind of tacos? Everything. They, they had, had corn asada the, tacos out there? Not corn asada. It's, uh, what's that motherfucker called? I can't even remember, dog. But it was like a beef and they uh -huh. have it on a stick and that shit like spinning around. They just chopped the meat off, yeah. the meat off for you. It's called a uh, gyro, gyro. Oh, gyro. okay. What the fuck? Oh, okay, that's, that's like, um, that's what's, like what's that, that um, like Palestinian type of food, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. I don't yep. want to, I'll be fucking this uh, up and somebody be mad <laughs> at me. But yeah, it's something like that. I had guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. That. <laughs> and they got the <laughs> They got the sauces and the white sauce and all that extra shit. Y'all know what I'm talking about, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that. definitely. That shit was... Like, it's, it's it's safe over there. Like, the kids going to train by themselves. Like, they're going to school. At what age? Like, it's like six, seven. They like this tall. Book bags on, going to school. And don't it be like... is this, Do people... Most people walk? No, it's like trains. The okay. Trains so, trains. Days. Like, I was in the train one time. Like, where you got to... They had them in, stuffing them in. <laughs> like, we in there like So sardines. somebody is actually pushing yes. you from the back yes. for y'all to close the door. Yes. <laughs> we in there like this whole time. And that's every day? And like, certain times. If you in there traffic time, So it's, it's like, if everybody getting off it's work, over. then you about to be stuffed in there. Or if everybody it's going over. to work, so you like about to be in, stuffed. So uh, like Shibuya. So it's a scene in, uh, what's it, Fast and the Furious. Shibuya with the uh, 100 building. I went in there, that little walking space where all, it's crowded like that for real. And you really got to. Yeah, and on that, going back to Yakuza on that train, it's over. You in there like a sardine. So that's why it's funny when you seen that, that fast and furious, you're like, I know exactly I know what the hell that, you yeah. talk about. Yeah, that's just like that for real. It'd be that many people going through that. Yeah. Process. And you was there for four years and that when you finished? No, I was there for four years and then I went to Guam for two years and I got out. Out here Dang, so you really did get to like do some traveling. What was Guam yeah. like? Because I know that like oh, I like nice. that type of food too. That's an, it's nice, small. Uh, you get you get bored after a while. Mm. But I mean, it's nice. Like it got beautiful sights. Like the hikes is nice. But it's not like you a know, city. City. Nice. No, no, no. It's like kind of like a I country. I think it's like what thirty five miles long and thirty five miles wide. You wide. know better than me. Like you can drive around it, and I think it take like two 30... three hours. Damn. Drive around the whole island. Like it's good views though, yeah, for sure, for sure. And you got to experience that, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. So, what's it been like for you in San Diego now? It's been nice, like. Shit. And you said you've been out for three years now. Three years, mm -hmm. three years. I'm glad. Mm. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, thankful though, thankful, thankful. But it's been nice, you know, the family growing. Like we we purchased our house in what 2019. And you like, said you're only 28. 28. And you already doing all that. You moving. I'm doing a lot. You moving. Really. <laughs> you moving. I'm trying. I, I got to I gotta set my kids up. I got to set them up. That's so the goal. They can live a better life than what I live. Mm -hmm. And my parents, they did a good job. Like, we we lived a better life than them. I know for sure. Mm -hmm. I know for sure. Yeah. So, I got to do the same thing for my kids. Mm -hmm. What inspires your creativity when you are uh, making your art? Um, Real life. Mm -hmm. Like, um... Like, I want to do things for, like, kids who have cancer mm. or, you know, the LBGT community. Like, real-life things that people want to paint. People are tired of painting trees and uh, leaves or whatever they be. Stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, whatever they paint at right. the place. But mine is, like, you know, like I showed you, like, these are things people want to paint. Um, gym shoes, Nikes, mm. something that, you know, really just... Something people want to look at on their wall, you know, and they gonna look back and and you can't mess it up. So you can really just come and drink your liquor and smoke your whatever and really have a good time. You're not gonna mess it up. Mm -hmm. So that's also what makes it different. And what made you want to do it for like people with cancer? Do you, it's you know it's not even necessary. It's everybody with disabilities. It's right. a mental illness. Um, any type of issues like that's what I really want to key into I also want to like um do like school like I want to make it like a full-blown six-figure business where it, it cater to those type of you know people mm -hmm. but also we have a general crowd like you know people just want to come paint like like I said painting with a twist is they got they're a million dollar company mm -hmm. and mine's it's way better so and now you see exactly you about to be working towards that to even elevate even above that yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so for you growing. so for you what like you also kind of touched on mental health what helps you like keep your mental health at a mm. a good level well for sure like when I see people like for instance I did a party and it was one lady <laughs> the, it was one envelope left in the basket 
for this little inspirational quote. And she came in late. And I don't know, she was, I guess she drove by and just pulled over to see, because it was right on the corner of, um, Bar, I mean, uh, Boston Ave. So that's where we do it at okay, the Barrio Food Hook. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, you know, they have the shrinking lights. It was really pretty, and I started out really nice. So um, I caught her wandering around, like, you know, it was the end of the night. And so when I walked up on her, she was like, oh, this is so nice, man. I said, I have something for you. Like, it made my day to give her this note. And when she got the note, she kind of, like, teared up a little bit. So, like, things like that, like, it really makes a difference for me. And it, it just, like, I, I only, I don't, there's so many people I can help or touch by just simply doing art. Like, it's a whole thing. It's really a thing. Who do you feel is there for you when you, like, need to be uplifted? Um, my immediate circle. Mm-hmm. So, like, my cousin, my sister, my auntie. Um, the my the my main people and um like I stay focused because I know what I want to do I know what I need to accomplish so I kind of got my head on you know on the swivel mm-hmm. and that's really keep me driven like I want to change the world one day so see them is big dream you didn't just say like a city you want to change the world for sure how how often do you enjoy cooking is that more of a job for you now or is it still something you really just enjoy doing all the time. What even started you cooking off? When I was younger, um, when I was 17, I ended up landing a job for, um, everybody worked for Cedar Point, but I ended up going as a certified um, trainer. So they sent me like to Pennsylvania for two weeks to learn how to cook for Perkins Restaurant and Bakery. And Perkins is, what is that? Um, That's the breakfast restaurant located, oh, do you know about Cedar Point? Not at all. Oh, okay. So, you know, Six Flags. Yeah. Okay. So, Cedar Point is like one of the world's largest um, roller coaster um, amusement parks. Okay. So, um, it's called Breakers Hotel. Um, it's the hotel off the water. So, it's probably, it's the biggest, probably most expensive hotel in Cedar Point um, off the water. So, like, we're located by uh, Fridays and it was like Kabachi. And then it was this restaurant that, you know, it's predominantly breakfast. So, everybody ate there for breakfast. Right. But they also serve lunch and stuff like that. So um, I was 17. I was the only young black female in there chef training the kids that came. So I trained the kids that yeah. was coming. And so um, I did that. And um, I just started cooking. I also cooked for Black Rock. Um, it's like a restaurant in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I mean, so it's not like really like a passion. Like I said, I just want to be a business owner. I want to, like, I want to own things and start up stuff and then have a blossom and to just help people with the funds that I make. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily like I just have a certain, like you said, do I like art? Like what, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's not necessarily the art, but I do put a lot of passion into it. I am a creative person, mm-hmm. but overall I want to just be a 10 out of 10 businesswoman who can start something and generate wealth from it and then give back to the community from the wealth. Yeah. So like you said, like this is obviously you love doing the cooking and everything like that. And also you trying to start your own business and blossom mm-hmm. off from that. Where did you even learn, like I kind of spoke on earlier, where did you learn the recipes for what you're doing that the people mm-hmm. love out here in San Diego now? Yeah, so his aunt, <laughs> um, she has the recipes and she uh, basically taught me how to cook it her way. And then um, just took off from there and just got the kitchen bumping out. Mm-hmm. And with her teaching your way, did you also throw your own spin on also like other things as well? Um, You just stuck to the recipe. I stuck to her recipe uh, predominantly, but maybe a little tweaks, but most for sure is her recipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And like that was what you said. You was growing up eating like all the time. Mm -hmm. So then you brought that out here. How have people responded to the food that you've cooked out here now from her cooking? We get a lot of positive feedback. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They love it. We had a lot of foodies come out. Like, that's how you said you heard about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of foodies come out, and they give their genuine, like, you know, feedback. Because, you know, we just serve the food, but I don't often hear, you know, how the people feel about it unless they, you know, the foodies come, and then right. we talk about it. So we got a lot of good clapbacks. So I know I'm doing something right. Everybody's happy. We doing good. We doing better, you know, every day. We doing better. Mm-hmm. So we're growing as a business, and we, you know, we see it. And you guys have now been out here. You said, how how long has the restaurant been out here now? Uh, Since October 15th. Yeah, October 15th was the grand opening. Mm -hmm. So about four months now. How was that grand opening for you? To actually Uh see like your dream now come into reality. 
it was nice. Like, I mean, we didn't really get the turnout because it started raining and everything. Like, the, oh, yeah. the weather it really was, messed it up. Yeah. But, and then y'all yeah. just talk about how San Diego always said, you're like, mm-hmm. God damn, what happened? What happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it's still a good turnout. Like, a lot of my coworkers and friends came through, supported still. And um, I mean, we had a good day. So, mm-hmm. you know, Kitchen had good energy in there. We was laughing, joking, having right. a good time. So, What's people's favorite dish that you guys notice? Catfish. That's a, just a straight ghost. And you like, boom. And how about Catfish. the... I know, I'm sure, like, you don't want to, like, narrow down the size, but what do most people get for their sides? Macaroni, <clears throat> yams, greens. It's no, it's no... That's we can't saying, we right. I, isn't, we can't choose because they're all gone. So mm-hmm. we're gonna run out. Mm-hmm. We run out of five pans of mac and cheese. We just make so much food now. Will it ever get to a point that you gonna then teach the recipe to somebody else and you won't be cooking? Yes, mm-hmm. we're working Definitely. on that now. So because I'm there all the time, Definitely. so we, we need some help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eleven to eleven every day. Yeah, yeah. We there, we there. And for you, like you said, you working all the time. How hard is it? You being a business owner. I mean, to keep the business actually even going. Like, mm-hmm. and that ain't even on a small scale. That's just like a whole venue you own and have to keep going mm-hmm. day to day, supplies, everything like that. Like yeah. how difficult how difficult is that for you? Or if I not, mean, I mean, how easy it for you? It's it's a challenge because it's not even my only business. I got two other businesses. So oh, I didn't even know it's that. It's my third one that I started. But my first one is uh, a label me and my partner, YK Hollywood, started back in Detroit, uh, Work Hard, Get Money. Mm-hmm. So it's a label. We got like six artists right now, including ourselves. So okay. we got that one going. Then I got Turo, where I rent out my cars. I got like six cars. So it's another Six cars. Business. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Another business I got going right, All right. there. So Sofu City just opened up. So this is the last one. But you know, uh, I put more of my time in this right now because every startup business is gonna really take time right. and dedication. But the other ones is, is going pretty good. Like, you know, I still attend to them when I need to. Mm-hmm. But um it ain't too bad. It's really just, you know, still being that good father. That's really the hardest part. Because you being pulled in so many yeah, different directions. I got to be here, to... make sure this is good, but I still got to make sure my kid is good. Like, I still got to, I at least got to get, you know, some time. And every day, you know, they got to see my face, know yeah. that I'm still here. Even though I'm working, I'm doing all this for them. Like, yeah. I'm putting all this grind in for them. It ain't for me to go get some, go do this. Like, I do it all for my kids. And kind of like, like what, what I touched on with her, with you being pulled in so many different directions, what keep you at a level headed spacing, like with it, as far as your mental health, or what keep you level headed? And so I'm, I used to ride my bike a lot, and then I used to meditate like 15, 20 minutes. And a bike, like, like motorcycle, bike, or no, like no, bicycle? Like bicycle. Okay, for I'm sure. on the bike early in the morning because my schedule I used to have was uh, 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mm. So I come here to take my daughter to daycare, and then I go ride my bike, work out, you know, really. Get your mind to a different space. Meditating, that shit really opened my mind up to a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I really think of things different now. I don't really see things in one, you know, point of view. Not even two. I mean, I'm looking at it from a, now another person. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm on the back end now. So it's, it's just open your mind up to different things. Like, I need to get back into it. I've been slacking, but, you know, I'm so invested in Also been doing a lot right of now, stuff. So... <laughs> But I'm a, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm going to manage it. You know, that's it. That's all you got to do. Live and learn. And you got to tweak. Tweak. I just got to tweak some stuff and get it back going. What got you even into meditating? <sighs> so, you know, uh, my wife at the time, you know, we, we had some problems and, you know, I was in a bad place. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as men, we don't really, you know, talk about that. Right. We, we, we got to be men. We got to be strong. Dust it off. Put the right. dirt on it. Blah blah blah, you know. But and that's honestly, as as I've grown up, that's not what a goddamn man really is on some real shit. That's some, yeah, yeah. Obviously, growing up, like that's what you thought, like that. right? But you holding in all that shit and supposed to be like, oh man, mm-hmm. that shit that ain't phasing me. Mm-hmm. That's not the fucking move. Yeah, but just doing that shit, I was like, you know, I got to do something. I got to change. I can't keep being stuck in this moment. Like, yeah. And doing that, you know, riding that bike early in the morning, shit, ain't nobody really out. It's just me. Shit, I got my music on, or, you know, if I listen to audio books and two, I listen to audio books, so I, you know, might have that on. I'm just in my mode. Mm-hmm. And then go meditate 15 minutes, clear my mind. I said, I had a good view. It's a nice little view over here I used to go to. 
nice little view. So I open my eyes and I'm looking at that like, you know, just appreciate life a yeah. little bit more, just a little bit more. Every that's time. big. Like you definitely gotta appreciate your life because even what she was touching on earlier, like you don't appreciate something till it's really gone. Mm-hmm. So we want to appreciate everything while we got it here. Like just the breath that you got daily, that's even in the that you got legs to walk on and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it just be the smallest stuff to really appreciate. What got you even into doing music? So when I started, uh, YK he been rapping shit thirteen, shit twelve maybe. So he's twelve years old rapping. Rapping, he he nice. Like when uh-huh. he was in high school growing up, like he used to rap and, and didn't cuss. Had mixtape, didn't cuss. And, and what made hard. him? What it made him hard. not cuss? Like, it was hard. It was some hard. Because <laughs> most people bro. was cussing. What and made him cussing. not? He wanna... was not cussing. He was like, yeah, I'm gonna just be different. Mm. Like, he's just different. Bro. Yeah. And I saw that. I'm like, oh, I like that shit. I, I really the music good. You know, energy good, bro. And we just connected, and that was it. Like. I'm on it. Like, we going to the studio. All right, bro, what's up? I ain't even rapping shit. What's up, bro? Let's go. I ain't even rapping, but me just being there and shit, being around them shit, that shit contagious. Music contagious. Yeah. So I just, I started thinking of shit, right? Shit. He like, oh, shit, that shit nice shit. Come yeah. on. And I just got into it, shit. We was just rolling. And then I ended up joining the military, so we just put a little pause on it. But he was still doing his thing. He was working shit, still grinding. And then once I got back stateside, you know, since communication hard, like time zone difference right. is over. Exactly. But, you know, once I got back out here, we got back on it. Shit, we back doing shows. Shit, we trying to do a show in March. Out we in Detroit? Try, out, here, out here in San Diego. Oh, for sure. Because I want work hard, get money. I want to bring that shit out here to San Diego. Ain't no yeah. real big label out here. Yeah. Why not? Why not? And so, work hard, get money, not just a label. Like, it's, it's a family. Like, yeah. We, Whatever you do, you can come. You can come. Like we look out for each other. So mm-hmm. somebody needs something, we go hit up one of them first. Yeah. Or I got somebody right here. Like we we plug each other. Like that's that's what it really is, a family connection, a network. See, and that's bigger than just being a business. Like you Definitely. said, I mean, obviously there's a business behind this, but like mm-hmm. you said, this is really family oriented. Indeed. So what what makes it so um that you even what the hell was I just about to say? That shit slipped my mind. We be smoking and shit. That shit be trippy like a motherfucker. But it's going to come back to me like a motherfucker. I own everything. I was just about to say this shit. <laughs> it was good, too. It was hella good. It was hella good. But no, I also just wanted to, because I have a daughter of myself, like, what keeps you, like, you also, you experienced with your parents being married for 27 years. So also that, like made you want to be the the father that you are today. Mm-hmm. How is it with you having a daughter? You got two daughters. So yeah, I got two daughters. One stay in Atlanta with her mama. Mm-hmm. And then my other two out here, I got a daughter and then a son. So my baby, Victor, and then my second oldest is Vera. And then my oldest is Olivia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, I love them shit. I always want it. Like I, I love kids, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm easy with them. Like they, they learn a lot from me. Like my kids was easy. They they didn't cry a lot. Like they went to sleep when they need to go to sleep. Mm. Like it ain't been bad for me. So you know I enjoy it. I love to be a father, just to teach what I know, so they can do better. And that's major because like you've already, like you said, you already have three businesses. So there's a lot that you could even give to. I mean, not only your kids, but even just from this podcast of yeah. you even letting people know of what you've been doing. Cause like I said, I didn't even know you had three businesses. You just let me know that right now. So that's like inspiring for myself. That's like, damn, he got already got three businesses. This is the third one that he got going, not just the one, the two, this is the three. Mm-hmm. And it's something already in, I mean, like San Diego ain't cheap at all. So what you're doing out here for that is like, that's major. And you brought some soul food out here. That, I mean, like you only got select a few really soul food out here that people even mm-hmm. would know about. So you bringing that to San Diego is like, that's big for us. That's why like, right when I saw it, I was like, let's get him on there like immediately. Definitely. Let's get him on there immediately. <laughs> so that was big for me already. So and for you, what level? I mean, like you, I know you already touched on how you want like a, a six figure business. Is there anything else you was inspiring to do outside of your business that um. you got going now? So, um, once this get established, I do want to um, have a nonprofit mm-hmm. um, called Saving Christina. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, 
I had a brother, his name was Chris. He passed away. Mm -hmm. So instead of Chris, I put Christina. Mm -hmm. And it's like um, basically a school for um, both women and men. Even young age, maybe they had a kid of 14. Maybe they struggling, right? So we'll take them in. We'll offer daycare. Um, we'll house them. We will put them. I mean, how many people have degrees and don't use it? Right. Right. So we'll partner with businesses and we'll send them out, but they'll get experiences in different fields. Mm -hmm. And they also, you know, in exchange, get a worker or whatever the case may be. Um, I want to offer culinary classes where we actually cook for the homeless and like professional. Like we treat them like, you know, top top tier citizens. Yeah. We take their coats for them. You know, we give them beautiful platings. Like, so they're growing and they're learning. They're also, you know, we're also taking care of the community. We want to plant gardens around the city. We want to we want to teach them about um, business credit. We want to we want to just make just make them more aware of you know what's out here in this world to offer. And you know a lot of people don't have a good start to this this life we live. That's for so real. we just had a little more um, you know a little more I guess I'm just a bigger heart for people sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you know people make bad decisions. But, you know some people. Just got a hard life, and they just bought into this world like that. So I want to offer something for people who's young. They might be twenty eight and just just messed up out here. Mm -hmm. It might need to be rebalanced. You know what I'm saying? So we just want to offer something for the community. So and like I said, everything that I'm doing is 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 for the greater good always. That's definitely because that's something I'm trying to do as well. It's called the big umbrella. Like that's something with a nonprofit where I go out downtown and I got clothes and like. Uh, female hygiene products, shoes, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Water and stuff like that. I always mm -hmm. bring out and give it out to, until I ain't got nothing up. So I'm, I definitely, when you said nonprofit, I'm like that's something like I want to touch on as well. Mm -hmm. How do you even deal with so many people passing away in your life? Other than I mean, then you just have to deal with it. But that's not the same for everybody. Yeah, I think death changed people. That's just death changed people. So you can either let it break you, or you turn it into something that's. You know, that's going to that's gonna drive you because it'll ruin you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that, I don't know how many, you know, people like your mother, your father, you know, close people, your brothers, just like those people are very close. That's not your, your lost long uncle. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, death will change you. and It's just what you're going to do with it. So, you just you turn it around. And you find, obviously, with the mentality you have, that's it. maybe like a part that, kind of turned you around to have the mentality mm -hmm. you had. Yeah, it's a driving force. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God give his hardest battles to his toughest soldiers. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to give back to the community. And, like, I'm also doing something that I want to do. You know, I want to build generational wealth. For me, my family, I don't have kids yet, but I got a nephew. You know, right. I got a sister. And she already a boss, so we just going to have enough to, you know, take care of our family and also bless other people and give back. Mm -hmm. That's what this world about. I mean, this is what it's about. Love your, you know, love your your neighbor like you love yourself. So definitely, I just remembered the question I was going to ask you earlier. Mm -hmm. It was about when uh, artists. Are there any artists, even in San Diego or out in Detroit, or period, that you're looking for that you want to work with? Because <laughs> I don't ever want it to be like, oh, he got to be working with somebody from San Diego or whatever. It's just somebody who you look forward to working with. I mean, it ain't really nobody in specific. It's just, you know, I just need good energy. Somebody really ready to do that work, you know, because life go keep going on. You know, things go happen, but you got to stay focused. You know, as long as they can keep that focus and, you know, they showing that they ready to work. They got the they got the uh, projects. They, they got everything laid out. They ready to do it. So I'm with it. Mm -hmm. Like my team, we real strong. YK, Vincino, Swayze, Gelato, Twenty Nine. Uh, we going like we we trying to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any? Because you like you said, you have three businesses. Is there one that you kind of want to maybe excel in more than the other? No, I want them all to just mm -hmm. blossom to. I'm just planting the seeds and water. I water every day. <laughs> <laughs> I water every day. I just want to see who grow too. What's your favorite dish that she cooked? I got to say the shrimp. The shrimp and the macaroni and yams. Mm -hmm. they, they the best, yeah. And for you, yeah. what's your favorite dish that you make? Um, I love the yams. That's my favorite. Uh, <laughs> the yams and 
Well, you know, once you eat there every day, you get sick of it. Right. So I can't eat no more. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yams, yeah, I mean, we just we we're also introducing bowls too. Bowls are like, and what what's gonna be in the bowl? Like um, size and then a protein. Mm, two sides. Two bro. sides and a protein. Yeah. So yeah, like um, I had like a catfish with the we had catfish nuggets with the mac and cheese. Oh god damn, and that's gonna and be the in yams. a bowl. Yeah. Oh. So that they kind of took it to the next level. So yeah, that's my favorite right now. It's so, new. <laughs> and with that, so with that being, is there any restaurants that you guys actually enjoy out here in San Diego? It don't have to be so nothing. <laughs> Stop, All right, what's that place in the mall? What's Bobby's spot? Oh, oh, what's the name of it? Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You said nothing. We, well, okay, so Thai food. My baby Bobby cooked the best Thai food. Um, I don't know the name right now. We are gonna edit that beef <laughs> that back in. <laughs> uh, but um, it's another. I'm. I don't know. I'm kind of like funny, so. Well, since I've been down here, I really I went to Cheesecake Factory. Like we we used to go out when when you first got down here, you take it wherever you want to go. Yeah. And I used to get the best thing on the menu, and I was not pleased. Yeah. Like never. So I'm, I'm kind of like I don't know. Is that the same for you? Yeah. I mean the, the tacos out here good. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you, you can't lie on the tacos. The tacos I like you, the tacos. You can't lie on the tacos. Yeah, I, I like the tacos. You don't like the tacos? Sure. No. Oh damn. Okay. No. It's that one place so in look, the mall they yeah. come. In Detroit, we don't they don't eat our tacos with carne asada. Which one eat tacos with, with ground beef? Ground beef, yeah. So it's just a little. It's, it's different. different. It's different. Yeah. Like my people's came out here. We went to a taco spot. <laughs> they was like what the carne what asada? Is this? They said no. We want ground beef. They said <laughs> yeah. We don't do, we don't that. do that here. <laughs> we ain't even eat there, bro. We left. We went to go eat somewhere else. They said all right. We good. It's over. Like. <laughs> Nothing's good. It's either. just different. That's it. So, what's y'all favorite spot to eat in in Detroit? Mm-hmm. Shit, corned beef. What's Ooh, the corned beef Lou's, spot? Blues <laughs> Deli for sure. Shout y'all out. Coney Islands. Coney anyone. Islands. Anyone. <laughs> anyone. We try to bring that down here too, though. Like anyone. we trying to like hot dogs and stuff like that. Like the Coney dogs. Mm-hmm. We already got wing dings, so like maybe do like chili cheese. What's wing dings? Oh. Need some wing dings. Yes, them is wings. Like breaded chicken. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's and, a thing. And, and how? Did, what, what came up with the name wing dings? I mean, that's what we. That's what, that's what I. They call that's what they call. That's what they say on the box yeah. too. It's, oh, okay. so they the say wing dings, wing, but it's all. It, they already broke apart. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. They're they just pre breaded. Yeah. It's really good. So. See, y'all teaching me some new shit. That's why when I don't know something, I'll be asking yeah. questions about it. <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, they like it. They like it out here. Shit. Mm-hmm. They've been selling a lot lately. So. They experience in it. The wing days. Has there been any, even like bars or restaurants? I mean, not even restaurants, because we, we already know the food. Y'all <laughs> not fucking with the food out here. Has there been any the places? What have y'all, because like y'all said, just beautiful views. What have y'all enjoyed out here? We try to go out to the little clubs down here. Baby, yeah. <laughs> can me, I'm, man. Is the clubs in Detroit, do they get out at a later time? Cause I think out here it's, it's like two, I but maybe somebody got it late. It's about one forty here, shit. <laughs> it ain't <even> two o'clock. <laughs> one forty is over. Y'all got to uh... Yeah, I guess it is different. Yeah, cause they still be a little lit downtown yeah, after uh-huh. work. Oh, it'd be about two, two thirty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there any other business you want to push like out here in San Diego? I mean, I got. I got a lot. I got a lot of ideas. <laughs> See, that's big. Like that that's it's big that you're not even stopping. Like you still trying to keep it going. Like you said you want and she also yeah. touched on generational wealth. Like mm-hmm. that's major. I also was thinking on my head, I was thinking, are y'all close to Flint? Flint, Michigan. Yeah. Or is that far out? It's like a yeah. th- 30 hour away, maybe. Oh, 30 hours. hours. No, no, no. no like no, no, 30 no. minutes to an hour oh, away. Yeah. It's not like not even 30 minutes, about 45 minutes away. So I, yeah. I watched a podcast and they touched on like in probably five or 10 years, it's going to probably be research on people who lived in Flint, Michigan with like the water they were drinking with all the lead and shit. So mm-hmm. do y'all know people like personally from Flint, Michigan? Yeah, I had um, some neighbors that was from Flint, but they moved there, you know, like it was a big thing. And the problem was, because I, I didn't even, I'm not even going to bullshit. I did not touch on it as big as I should have. Was the problem the, the lead in the pipes? Because I know how they was always saying, because like I said, I seen the podcast and they was talking about how 
how detrimental lead is and like that's going to be like a case study in five or 10 years if, if they make it that long or something like that. So what you guys even like being that close to that, did that affect you guys in any way? No, it didn't affect me directly for sure. It was mm-hmm. like a Flint, Michigan thing. Yeah. Um, but like people were like, I know it was like, like a, like a national disaster. Like people were having water, saying they needed water. Like it was a big thing, but it was ignored by the media. I, I think they didn't give it a lot of. Yeah, yeah. And that's crazy. That is that's something that's like you would think that's something that's going on out in a, a different country. But like this is going on in America, yeah. and it wasn't brought to light. Like you have to actually do some research behind it to even know that this happened. Like some people still probably don't know. Like oh, I didn't even know that happened. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it affected a lot of people for sure. So that's why to me, like that, that was that was crazy. And even even watching, like I said, watching that podcast today, that was like something that was like kind of blew my mind. But yeah, that's that's neither here nor there. Is there any? I just want people to know, like, how is it that they could reach you guys on your social medias? <clears throat> no. Either one. <laughs> that's fine. So, uh, so Food City, three one three. Is it underscore three? Y'all asked me laughing like a mom. I told you, I told y'all. No, nah, that's cool. Like I'm saying, like that's why we said, like I told y'all earlier, like I love laughing because I mean that's what's really supposed to be happening. So like really laugh the shit up. I don't okay, I'm oh, sorry. Look, I don't even know my Instagram no more. See, like that's what I'm saying. That's why I want people to know how they can reach you. Yo, how you really want them to hey, tap in awesome. for you? Big thing, official big thing. She gonna whisper it in the microphone. Underscore Big Me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but my Instagram, but official underscore Big Vic. You can follow Soul Food City underscore 313. So uh, we have a lounge in Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, on Nine Mile and Van Dyke. Uh, we do book parties, private parties. We also have a BNB. Um, so that pay, well, okay, so we're currently trying to relaunch it. But I'm gonna give y'all both the Instagrams. Definitely. Um, it's her social room. Sorry, and that page. But uh, we're known as Kimberly Pieces. Mm-hmm. So people usually know us as Kimberly Pieces, but right. we are kind of like transitioning to a different name. Like I said, we did it three years ago, so we're kind of like you know, we finally get into a place where it's like beneficial and everything's just you know moving into to place. So mm-hmm. um, Kimberly Pieces on Instagram, definitely. And um, yeah, her so her social room on Instagram. Because definitely we all about like promoting people and what they're doing. Like that's why, I mean, this is what really keeps us even going with this. So it's definitely like I love even having y'all own. We definitely about to eat y'all food like a motherfucker right now. So I'm looking forward to doing that. It's been another episode of the Big Umbrella Podcast. I'm going to repeat that. That's the Big Umbrella Podcast with two G's and it's a wrap. And there y'all go. Well, let's get some tacos, nigga. Can we really get some tacos? <laughs> You trying to get some tacos? Let's get some tacos, nigga.